Back to the Strive cast. Yeah. Um, uh, season two, 43. 43. Mm. Episode 43. Mm. Great. Oh, wow, we are going <laughs> Here we are. Welcome back. Let's, uh, let's introduce ourselves. No party, homie G. No party, homie G, in the house. <laughs> All right. And, and, and also, I am uh, uh, Jeff, and welcome yep. to Brown. Thank you. Um, there's our two hosts, Noel and Jeff. How about our producers? Would they like to introduce themselves? Yep. Okay. I'm producer Susie, and here mm-hmm. comes my girl, Wit, as in my other producer. That's right. Okay. And then um, our sound and video engineer who created an awesome yes. new open, if you saw it last week on many of our social media channels. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Ryan, the sound video engineer. I think that came as a big surprise for last episode. Sure was. Have a good, and also for those that haven't watched, have a better first impression. That's right. If you, if you only listen to our podcasts and you want to check it out, you can actually watch it. I need to put my dog uh, upstairs in the kitchen. Social media. Okay. <laughs> Noel's dog is going in the kitchen. You're scoring well. um, and I'm not sure if she's in the kitchen, but Olivia is on assignment um, this week, so she's not able to join us. And I'm Pete, so that's our that's our gang. So that's who we've got. So do we want to check in for a minute? Noel's back. Look at Noel going backwards down the stairs. <laughs> Impressive. And now with Noel's dog in the kitchen. <laughs> Oh, the show. Um, Noel and Jeff, you want to check in? How was your weekend? Anything new and improved? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I um I uh, watched the the Red Sox. Yeah, not the, such a great start for the Red Sox. Well, yeah, I know, but um, I watched the Celtics though. They're they're doing great. Good, good. Noel, how about you? Good weekend? Oh, yes, a beautiful weekend. We got to go to Dunkin' Donuts. We had Eskimo pie in the pool. Oh. We swam really good. Yeah. Good. I was going to ask, since it's been so hot, have you been spending most of your time in the pool? Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Likewise, walking. Yeah, a lot of water. Good. Yeah, make sure you hydrate out there today. It's real hot. And then, Susie, you had a special occasion over the weekend. Oh, yes, it did. Oh, did you go to a wedding plan? Well, a birthday. My birthday was so much fun. We went to um, Wind Pond for my birthday swim. Nice. And I'm 33 now. Oh my God, I'm big deal now. And <laughs> so I we went on a we went out for dinner at Ken's. I opened some presents and I got this from Meg. Pretty. Ooh, Is that a bird? Yeah. Bird on the on the um, nest. Thank you, mom. And then have bunch of stuff. And now I had a cake. So and a birthday overall, then, huh? Yep. Awesome. With a birthday balloon in the background. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. Thank you, girl. You is in that with the girls, nice. me, and so yeah, the cake. Guess what the cake was? What? A ladybug. A, a ladybug? Yep. Nice. A ladybug cake. Oh, what color was it? Oh, flowers. Okay. 
flowers. Oh, those from you? Yes. Right now, my I I wish I sent those to her, but I didn't. There's still time. It can be a belated gift. Yeah. Oh, I can give her vitamin C for her birthday. True. Florida no. Orange. Right. Not the orange juice. So what do we think? Do we want to get this show on the road? Yeah. We've got a great show lined up. We've got a great guest, Doug Hitchcock from the Maine Audubon. Um, the staff. Uh, not uh, John Hancock. Oh, I'm, I'm Doug Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. not John Hancock. Love. Uh, that's my Pete. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Jeff, what do you say? We'll uh, be. Peace. We'll be right back. Welcome, Doug. Yeah, please welcome Doug Hitchcock. Yeah. Well, thank podcast. you so much. I'm thrilled to be on the podcast. Awesome. Well, we'll jump right into it. Noel, do you want to get started? Okay. Here are the questions for today. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about your job. What does natural Oh, with a natural? naturalist do? Do, yeah. Yeah, it's a fun question. I like to think that I'm still learning what I do every day. <laughs> um, I always, I always love uh, kind of, you know, the root of that word naturalist is, is all about nature. Um, so I get to do essentially lots of stuff with nature. The key part of my job is teaching people about nature. So at Maine Audubon, where I work, um, we're all about uh, education, conservation, and advocacy. So I work in our education department, um, and mostly just trying to, to teach people about kind of all the different ways that they can either connect with nature, things they should know about, and really trying to essentially uh, drive action, like get people to do things that are going to you know, be better for, uh, for the environment, which often is then good for themselves. Um, and I should say, uh, you know, a lot of my focus, um, because it's kind of what my background more is in, is, is mostly with birds. Um, so uh, birding or bird watching as a hobby is definitely like the most, um, uh, at least has the most people involved in it. So it's a really good way to kind of connect with people who are already outdoors and appreciating what's out there. And so I get to do a lot of those uh, things like leading bird walks, uh, doing some, some trips and tours, uh, really any place we can go to show people birds or other wildlife. Cool. Cool. Before you came on, we were talking about the Audubon, and it sounds like everybody here has been and has really enjoyed their time there. So thanks for all you guys do there. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear that you guys uh, go, um, especially the where our headquarters is at Gilsland Farm in Falmouth. Um, it's especially for being one exit outside of Portland. You can even take the bus there. Um, there's a bus stop kind of right at the end of our, our road. Um, is he, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing to me, like, how um, it's almost one of those, like, best-kept secrets. For, for being so close to the city, it, it gets such uh, low visitorship, which is actually kind of nice for, for a wildlife sanctuary. It's not like we want it to be flooded with people. Um, but I'll just, I'll make the quick plug uh, that if you ever get down to, um, towards the Scarborough Marsh. We have a nature center down there um, with all sorts of kind of cool education activities mm -hmm. that go on throughout the summer. A lot of people don't realize down in Biddeford, near Biddeford Pool, Maine Audubon has a sanctuary down there called East Point Sanctuary that looks at like Wood Island Lighthouse. Um, and you can get up to Bangor. We've got Fields Pond with actually a nice environmental center there and, mm -hmm. and a huge spot up near uh, Greenville called Borstone wow. Mountain. So. Oh. I thought you were only located in Falmouth, so that's really cool. So, Jeff, you've got the next question. Uh, yes. Um, how uh, did you come to work at Maine Audubon? Yeah, I have kind of a, um, 
uh, I'll call it a less direct path than maybe a lot of my coworkers. Um, uh, but I, I, you know, I think I'm the ultimate story of like, if you, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life, that sort of thing. Um, so when I was going to school, I went to school um, up at the University of Maine, up at Orono. And, you know, as an 18 year old, I had no idea what I wanted to be doing with my life. So I decided to study finance of all things. Um, but I kind of knew that, you know, when I started skipping class to go look at birds, especially <laughs> rare birds that were showing up, um, that was probably an early indicator that I was studying the wrong thing. Um, but uh, while I was at school at Orono, um, I started working, actually the Nature Center just mentioned that's down at the Scarborough March. I got a job working there. Uh, so for Maine Audubon, uh, my title was store manager. So I thought that at least like on paper, it would look like I was still doing kind of a finance business <laughs> job, but I could spend a lot of time, you know, leading canoe tours and doing bird walks and that sort there of thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the, you know, the long story short, I, uh, I spent uh, essentially six summers working there, um, uh, essentially being a, what I you know, like to call being a bird bum, uh, just trying to find different bird jobs in different seasons, or do things like uh, banding birds. So we'd, we'd set up nets and capture them and catch them so that we could do things like take measurements and put a little band on their leg and kind of keep track of where they go and, and you know, who they are. Um, and so kept essentially just getting more and more experience. And then in the fall of 2013, um, uh, I should say more and more experience, but also doing a lot of volunteering at Maine Audubon. So that was kind of, uh, I, I was working for them part-time, but then started volunteering in Falmouth, um, helping the naturalists there a lot. And so when the when that previous naturalist left, um, there was a lot of stuff, a lot of the work that they were doing that I had kind of already started taking on. So um, uh, despite having my finance degree that I still have never used, um, <laughs> I've managed to uh, convince people that I, I know something about uh, nature as well. So it's, awesome. it's I think it's a, a fun story to tell because, you know, uh, I, I like to think that I, I still don't know what I'm going to do, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but very happy to be uh, where I am now. Awesome. Noel, you're next. Okay, here we go. Number two now. What is your favorite part of your job? Um... It's a fun question, especially during uh, this time that we're, we're stuck at home. Um, usually my favorite part of my job is that I get to be with people, uh, especially like leading bird walks or leading some of the trips that we do. Um, I really like being you know, an educator and being able to kind of uh, uh, teach, especially these, these like harder things like bird identification is, is a wonderful, you know, fun challenge, especially when you're, you know, with a group out in the field and trying to show them, you know, a good day during like peak migration, you know, in a, in a few hours, we could have 50 or 60 species, you know, at a single location. So that's when I just feel like I'm, I'm at my peak and I'm, I'm on. Um, but we still get to do some really fun stuff right now. Uh, and, and it's definitely that, engagement that uh kind of finding ways to keep people engaged with nature which we're actually seeing a huge spike in it right now mm -hmm. as more people are staying home they're kind of realizing the wildlife and nature that's right in their backyard so uh that's kind of been uh a very fun and maybe my my favorite part of my job right now is like i'll often just like look in my backyard um, see what I see around and then try to figure out ways that I can, you know, use what I have right next to me to, to teach people. 
Sound, sounds a little bit like what we're doing. So, <laughs> um, all right. So, Jeff? Yeah. You're up. Okay, cool. Your second uh, question. Yep. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, what is the hardest part of your job? Hmm, the hardest part? Yeah. Um, answering questions like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so the hardest part of my job, I think, is getting people um, uh, either engaged or to kind of do an, uh, essentially the action piece of uh, the learning, I guess. So, you know, we, we put so much effort into putting together these, you know, these classes, these trips, whatever we're doing, um, you know, either... You know, sometimes it's as fun as just showing people birds, but like Maine Audubon's mission is kind of all about mm -hmm. conservation. And, and so we, you know, we're showing people these, the diversity that's out there so that we can, you know, hopefully inspire them to do some sort of you know, conservation action or, or something that's going to help. Um, and that seems to be kind of one of the harder uh, things is, is, uh, convincing people that, you know, that these, even sometimes small changes that they can make can have actually really big impacts. Um, one I love, you know, just pointing out to people is like, um, a lot of people own cats and keeping cats indoors, which is kind of funny, you know, cats are our pets. They're not a, you know, they're not wild animals. They shouldn't be ro roaming around outside. Actually, you might be able to see Right behind me is my cat sleeping oh, yeah. on the couch. Taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure she is almost every day. Um, <laughs> but cats are um, not including, you know, uh, habitat loss or climate change. We know that those are two, you know, huge bad things. But cats are the number one killer of birds in the U.S. Um, and to think that that's something that humans put out on the landscape and, and is having such bad effects. Um, so keeping cats indoors, planting native plants in your yard. Um, there's lots of, you know, fairly simple things. Um, even some of the, the products we buy, you know, using less plastic, drinking, what we call shade grown coffee. Um, but uh, some of the, you know, it's really, it's, it's that, that engagement and, and driving people to action. And I'll say, you know, a, a, a big struggle for Maine Audubon is also just um, uh, essentially getting our voice out to everyone. We, we try to be a, a statewide organization, but it can be uh, quite challenging to figure out kind of how to essentially um, lower any barriers to entry for people to uh, appreciate nature um, or see the value in, in, in protecting it. So we're trying to do a lot of work to be essentially like, um, uh, what's well, the buzzword, but more inclusive. But we certainly realize that like, you know, it's, it's not just going to be a few people who are going to make these changes. Um, we need to engage with everyone in any way possible. Mm -hmm. Jeff? Uh, yes. I think it was that you. I think it's Noel. Oh, sorry, Noel. You're up. Okay, here we go. This is my third question. Okay. We are three exciting scenes coming up at at Maine Audubon that you would like to share with us. Yeah, it's uh. It's an exciting time at Maine Audubon because we're kind of, we're trying lots of new things. Um, uh, as we're doing right here, like we, we are spending a lot more time on Zoom rather than, uh, you know, typically we would um, be like hosting people at Gilson Farm at our headquarters in Falmouth. Um, so we're, we're learning the ways to kind of still be able to do that programming, but uh, do it mostly online. Um, the nice thing right now is we're, we're starting to kind of experiment more with uh, in-person programming again. So that's, uh, that was definitely a challenge for us this summer. Um, 
but we've done, we actually did a couple boat trips just last week. We went out to see puffins, um, brought people out with Hardy Boat. Um, and that's just always uh, such a fun time. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Puffins are adorable. They just, they look like little clowns. Um, they're so much smaller than people think, you know, you always see pictures of them and they, you know, they look big or they look like they'd be like a penguin or something. But um, our puffins are, are always uh, a fun one to see. And it's really fun to just see like how creative we're, we're being. So um, uh, another educator that I work with has started what's called the Chickadee Club. So you can actually like um, sign up online and get uh, uh, essentially content every month um, that you can do, you know, either yourself or with your family. Um, so it's, while it's uh, a challenging time, it's actually been really fun to see how uh, adaptive Maine Audubon has been and uh, some of the fun stuff that we have coming up. Cool. cool. Sorry, I was watching Noel make bird movements down yeah. at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> and now it's Jeff's third question. Yes. Go for it. Okay. How has COVID-19 uh, impacted, uh, uh, impacted uh, Maine Audubon? Yeah, so um, I guess I was getting ahead of myself by uh, mentioning, it, mentioning it already, but it's uh, maybe that proves the point that it, it has affected us, excuse me, affected us a lot. Um, you know, the, the hardest thing for us was, was probably when, when it hit, uh, well, it, well, it was March, uh, for, at least for us here in Maine, when, you know, it really started shutting things down. And usually kind of April, May, and June are like my busiest season. Mm -hmm. there, there's birding festivals that go on most weekends. That's when um, uh, usually the month of May, I'm like almost never home. I'm, I'm all over the state doing, uh, doing some sort of uh, either bird walk, a program, something like that. So, uh, you know, really tough that it kind of hit us during our, our, our busiest season. And then um, even for the rest of the organization, like we do um, summer camps at Maine Audubon, which uh, maybe I should have included that in, in uh, <laughs> the earlier question of, of how, I got, uh, how I got started at Maine Audubon. Because back when I was, um, I think I was eight years old when I first attended summer camp at, at Maine Audubon. So maybe there was, you know, a hint that I'd be going down that path much, much earlier. But um, uh, our summer camps were another one that we unfortunately had to had to cancel and those um, you know while Maine Audubon is a, uh, a nonprofit organization um, we do you know really depend on uh, those those revenue streams for keeping our employees employed yeah. um, so it's it's been that struggle um, you know, we're, we're fortunate we're, that we are a, a member-based organization and actually have seen a nice kind of, um, uh, I'll call it a solid amount of support from our, our membership base. But, um, uh, you know, it's, if, again, it has kind of forced us to adapt and, and learn how we can, you know, keep providing uh, uh, opportunities to our members and stay relevant. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So guys, that's the end of our regular questions. So now it's time for the what? The lightning round. Okay, the lightning round. So sorry right. for what you're going to get. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a little bit more fast paced. The guys will ask a little bit more sometimes off topic questions, but just a little bit of fun as we wrap up the interview. So Jeff always yeah. goes first in the lightning round. You want to kick it off, my friend? Yes, Pete. I'll do that for you. Okay, go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the, um, what's your favorite restaurant? Ooh, there you go. Oh, my favorite restaurant. Um, you know, I can't wait for like, uh, uh, Eventide in Portland, man, that, uh, it's a very special, you know, I would, I, I don't get to go there often, but it's the best. Great. Yeah. Noel? 
Okay. If you were in a a sea creature, what could? Oh, if you're talking about birds, what type? If you were a bird, what kind of bird do you want to be? There you go. Good question. Oh, I think. <laughs> You wouldn't believe how much I think about this. Uh, so I have always loved peregrine falcons because of their, their speed. They are the um, fastest animal around. They can dive over 200 miles an hour. Um, and they have, uh, some of them can have really large ranges. So I think that would be really cool to be able to kind of see lots of areas and travel really fast. Awesome. Good answer. Yeah. Yes. You have yep. another question? Uh, yes. Uh, it's a, a bird question. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> a bird question. Uh, oh, <laughs> what is a raven uh, uh, bird uh, versus um, a cardinal? What a raven bird? versus a cardinal? Yeah. And what, a fight? Who would win? Uh, I said, um, uh, I, I said, what type of a bird is a is a raven or a cardinal? Oh, so this is a, a fun one to think about. So both um, ravens are in a group we call corvids. So like all the crows, um, but if you kind of look at the way they perch, that's what kind of gives away that uh, ravens and cardinals are fairly you know, fairly closely related. Um, I would put them in that kind of nice group of perching birds. Um, and you know, the, the neatest thing to think about both of those is that they have very interesting songs. Um, we don't think of uh, female songs, as, or excuse me, female birds as singing too much, but you can actually see female cardinals sing quite a bit. And then ravens are incredibly vocal. They make all sorts of crazy noises um, uh, that you wouldn't even think that it was a bird making. Uh, not to make this a long question, but one time I was out in the woods and I thought there was a baby crying, um, like way out in the woods. And I followed, I kept following it thinking like, oh, you know, what is happening out here? This is this is not where a baby should be. And as I got closer, I realized it was higher and higher up in a tree and it was a raven making wow. these crazy noises. So our ravens, our cardinals, both two very vocal, uh, very fun birds to listen to. Awesome. I think Susie was showing off her, her fitting birthday gift for this episode. She just recently got a bird necklace. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. I'm 33 now. Wow, happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. No. Hey, you want to do one more question yeah. each, Noel and Jeff? Uh, yes, yes, this is my second question. Okay. If birds. Okay. If you what is your what is your favorite superhero? And what powers do you want to be? There you go. Mm. Tough one. Um, that is a tough one. You know, I, I've always been a fan of Thor. Um, I think he is super cool. Uh, I love the hammer. I love that he is the god of uh, thunder, lightning. Um, I guess they come together. Uh, <laughs> And he can fly, so there we go. You, we can, uh, that would be a very cool power to have. Um, yeah, I would definitely be Thor. Awesome. For sure. All right, Jeff, you get the last question. Uh, how can birds uh, fly? Ooh. That's a good one. So, I think this is a detailed question yeah. answer. <laughs> but we'll go for it. Yeah, so they have some very special adaptations, some things that are different from um, humans and really all other, um, almost all other, you know, things, except for some other, like, uh, there are, you know, of course there are things like bats that can fly, but um, the quick answer is that birds have, um, they are feathers, which is a very unique thing. All birds have feathers, um, which are you know very lightweight, 
and very aerodynamic. Those feathers are actually how we learn to make things like, um, if you look at airplanes, um, a lot of the designs of airplanes we learned from birds. And then another cool one is that they have um, air pockets in their bones. So their bones are much more lightweight than like you and I have. So it's, um, it's really thanks to those kind of special adaptations that they have that they uh, learn to fly. Hmm. All right. And now how about Ryan, you want to ask the last one? Tell us your best joke. Yeah. Sometimes we close oh. lightning round with you telling us our best, your best joke, if you have one. Yeah. Um, well, the first, uh, I can think of a bird one real quick. You guys might know this. Um, you might have heard this one before. Um, but, you know, we should be serious. You know, we're talking about... Um, uh, you know, these, these different birds are great questions, you know, uh, about some of them and, and um, seagulls, you, you guys have seen seagulls before. Um, do you know why they're called seagulls? No. no. Well, they fly over the sea and if you saw them flying over the bay, they'd be bagels. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Good one. <laughs> That's a good one, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on. Would you like to um, promote your website too? And then... Yeah, so um, if people do want to learn more about Maine Audubon, some of the, uh, especially the activities and things that we have coming up this fall, um, they can find out more at maineaudubon.org. Um, and follow us on social media. We are, uh, as of this recording, um, you know, end of July, we're like 300 people shy of 10,000 followers on Instagram. Wow. So we're, wow. we're pushing for it. Beautiful <laughs> photos um, and all sorts of kind of fun uh, uh, education pieces with those as, as well. So uh, awesome. well, we'll link to you from our pages too um, when we share this tonight. So all right, we'll try to get you to the 300. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Doug, for joining us. Um, and Jeff, what do you say? We'll be, we'll be right back. This is brought to you by listeners like you. Listeners like, Ryan, do you want to tell us the listener of the week? Doreen Rose. Doreen Rose. Doreen wrote a nice comment on our Facebook page, so that won her our Listener of the Week honors. So thanks for listening, Doreen, and uh, thanks for everybody who listened and shared our episode last week. And uh, we'd love for you to do it again this week. So please uh, like or subscribe or leave a rating or just share with your friends um, as we try to build our listenership here of the Strivecast. Right, guys? Yeah, Pete. That's right, Pete. Okay. Anything else on this section? Uh, no, Pete. All uh, right. Then take it away, Jeff. Ryan. Take it away, Jeff. Okay. We'll be. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, and it's time for Stenoa. Ask the Knoll. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have a theme song this week? GM, welcome to the Knoll. Yeah. Welcome to the Knoll. All right. Fork ask, song this ask week. The knoll, welcome to the Knoll. All right. Knoll, this week we have a, an email from Adam. Sorry, I can't find it. Adam Gasper. And uh, he wow. is from Waterville. And he wants to know, what do you think the odds are of football being played this year. Do you think oh. it's a season in? Yep. Thank you, Adam. Not Tom. He's out. Tom Brady? Yeah, he's out. Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't know I think who means, do you think the season will get canceled because of COVID-19, or do you think that they will play? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay. That's a good question. If you became COVID-19, and you don't play for the football, what type of sport do you like to play? COVID-19 joke? <laughs> is this, are you asking a question back to Adam or is this for us? 
to Adam. Oh, well, Adam, email us again. And if you were COVID-19 and you weren't playing football, what sport would you be? Um, you can send us that email and we'll share it next week if you hear this and write back. Um, <laughs> Noel, I think the question from Adam is for you. Since the whole thing is called Ask Noel. Um, do you think that there will be football this year or do you think it will be canceled? I don't know. I don't think anybody does right now. So that's probably a good answer. Jeff, how about you? You want to weigh in on that? Nancy uh, uh, yes, uh, Pete. Um, um, I actually think that um, I think I think uh, I think uh, football. I remember, had COVID nineteen. I think they might cancel it, or I think I think they I think yeah they could play. Yeah, I think our panelists are stumped here by Adam's question. So, if yeah. you have a question. Feel free to send it to us. Um, you can just write Ask Noel on the subject and send it to strivecast at pslstrive.org. And we'll take the best ones and we'll share them right here on our show. And uh, we'll come up with some excellent answers like we did today. Right, guys? Oh, you might even get a question thrown back at you. That's right. <laughs> All right. Noel, anything else you want to add to that? Not really. Okay. Do you have an outro? Yes, I do. If it. you had a dog, if you have a cat, don't forget to feed your pets before you ask no one. Don't forget to feed your pets before you ask no one. All right. Good song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then, Jeff? Yes, Pete. We'll be. We'll be right back. Jeff, we're back, and it's your segment. It's yes. time for yakking with you. Yes. What are we going to yak about today? Uh, uh, we're going to yak about um, is um, uh, a, a bird kind of game. A bird kind of game. Okay. <laughs> Take it away. Um, uh, a, a Winnie. Yes, Jeff. Um, what type of uh, what type of, of a bird? Um, you like what type of bird do I like? I'm gonna go with flamingos because they live by the beach. Ooh. Nice warm place. Uh, cool. Uh, this one's for Susie. <laughs> uh, hey, Susie, uh, what type of uh, what type of, of a bird you like? Well, my favorite bird, the state bird, which is Card black eyes sickity. Nice. All right. And you know why I I pick that because um, I miss sicky so much. So I I pick that one. Nice. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Ryan. Yeah. What What type of bird do you like? Um. Maybe a loon. Oh, good. That's a good one. Really good answer. Ooh. Hey, no, no, you're up. No, what type? What type of a bird are you like? I like a the one for baseball, a blue jay. Ooh. Oh. And Pete, in the same question for you. I, I'm gonna go with penguin then. Oh, a penguin. Yeah. Huh? Penguins are cool. Penguins? Uh, what about you, Jeff? Um, yeah, how about you? <laughs> uh, what type of bird that I like? Yeah. Um, I, I kind of like um, probably the cardinal. Okay. I like cardinals too. All right. All right. Well, that's the act with you. And unless there's anything else you'd like to yak about, yeah? No, I think that's it. Okay. And why don't you take us to break? Yes. We'll be? We'll be right back. All right, we're back. And this week's episode of the Strivecast is, is Noel. You want to tell him? 
this week's? Yeah, Olivia's napkin ice. Okay, Olivia's napkin ice cream place. <laughs> Right. Be where she is this week at Olivia's Napkins. Must be running Olivia's Napkins this week. Jeff, how is the ice cream at Olivia's Napkin? Uh, um, it is really, 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 really awesome. Wow. Five What's really? your favorite flavor to get there? Uh, well, we wish we could have her on the Strive Cafe, but she must be busy serving lots of customers right now. That's right. I think so. On assignment. Yeah, I think so, too. So Olivia's favorite flavor, real quick. Um, I say vanilla. Vanilla, straight up vanilla. No, no. Oh yes, Olivia's napkins. What favorite, favorite flavor, flavor to get at Olivia's napkins? A, a blueberry ice cream scone. Blueberry scone ice cream. All right, Susie. My favorite. My favorite. Favorite flavor is black. Ice cream, ice cream, um, black. Black raspberry? Black raspberry, yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, what? I like coffee Oreo. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> How many flavors do they have at Olivia's Napkins, guys? They have a lot. Lots of flavors. All right, Ryan? Um, I like strawberry and raspberry. Ooh. All right. Well, I guess I'll go straight up chocolate then. Classic. So, uh, yeah, Pete. All right. And if you'd like to advertise your business here, a real business, uh, we'd love to promote it for you. Um, just send us an email, strivecast at pslstrive.org. Um, and we'd love to talk about a plan that would work for you to promote your business. So, uh, thanks. And Jeff? We'll be right back. We're back, and it's time for... Susie's News! <laughs> All right, Susie, hit us with the theme song. You know it, and I love it. Susie's <laughs> <laughs> News. I love my assignment. And... We all love Susie's Q. Right. Wow. We hit some gonna, high notes there. What are Susie's Q's about today, Suze? Name that town, Pete. All right. Name that town. Nicknames of main towns. This will be fun. You guys ready? We can see if you can guess the town by its nickname. Okay. Is Susie go. playing or does she have the answers? Susie does not have the answers, I don't believe. So I think she can play. All right. Let's yep. First question. For uh, boys. Uh, All right. Ready, Suze? I'm going to go with number yep. one. Um, ready. Yep. Number one. The Queen City of the East. Queen City of the East. What uh, main town is the Queen City of the East? Queen. Oh. Hold on. Let's go. Let's start with the ladies. What do you think? No, and then you can steal. Susie, do you have a guess? I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I need your help, girl. Is it? Lubeck. It is not Lubeck. Any of the gentlemen? Yeah, ooh, Noel just called you a loser, I think. No, it's, it's a town. <laughs> oh, I said L of a town. Oh, okay. What do you think the answer is? Like, if, if, if it's based on a town, and, and this is a queen town, we go to London because Ooh. the Queen Elizabeth. I think yeah. it is, is a Maine. town in Maine, though. Maine. Uh, yeah, that is an excellent guess and good reasoning. Boston. Maine towns, dude. Maine. <laughs> Maine town. Maine in, in Maine, the state of Maine. How about Freeport? There you go, getting closer. 
Not <laughs> incorrect. So strike three for you, my friend. Um, Jeff? Uh, yeah. Ryan, any guesses? The Queen City of the East? The um, Queen City of the East. I, I think it's probably in Queens. <laughs> no, in Maine. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Queensbury? Uh, no, it is Bangor. Oh. <laughs> The exact origin of the phrase is difficult to prove. Resident Charles P. Roberts wrote sometime after 1834 that, quote, the town came forth like a star in the forehead of the morning as the queen city of the east. All right. Let's go on to number two, Suze. Number two. The city of ships. The city of ships. So think boats and ships. Oh! All right, gentlemen, go ahead. Who's going to go first? Boats and ships. Jeff, you want to go first? Um, okay, what main town do you think is nicknamed the City of Ships? Uh, the Boston Harbor. Maine. <laughs> no, not Boston Harbor, but good idea, good thought. Noel. Yeah, I know. Go for it. Portland. Nope, incorrect. Ryan. Wells. No, ladies. Right. Please? I think, do you have a guess, Susie? I think I might know it. I might, might obviously, have, but. Okay. Guess, Suze. What's your guess? Well. All right, we need an answer. I don't know. Okay, Whitney. Is it Bath? It is Bath. A point for the ladies. The oh, really? Yeah, girl. Because they build a lot of ships. There. Okay, let's go on to number three. Near, near, near mouth. Near mouth, capital of the world. The ear muff capital of the world, right here in Maine. Wendy's. Okay, I, think we're, I think we start with the ladies this time. Whitney's on a hot streak. Do you, can you do two in a row? Yes, she is. Is it Fort Kent? It is not Fort Kent. It does start with the same letter, though. It's a hint. Oh. Susie, do you have Susie. a guess? Um... What? Where is it? Um... <laughs> okay. Do we I have don't any know. answers, Suze? Okay. All right, gentlemen. Fort Clyde. <laughs> Fort Clyde? <laughs> yeah. Incorrect. I'm sure they have earmuffs there, but that's not what we're looking for. Jeff, earmuff capital of the world starts with F. No, no help from the audience. Uh, Fort Kent. <laughs> Uh, I think Fort Kent. It is not Fort oh, Kent. Yeah. I think is. I know. I think I know. Farmington. It is Farmington. But uh, that's Farmington, I yeah. Yes. I no know. Farmington. <laughs> Chester Greenwood, who was born in, in 1858, and he died in 1937 from Farmington. He invented the earmuffs in 1873 when he was only 15 years old. Wow. He reportedly came up with the idea while ice skating, and he asked his grandmother to sew some tufts of fur on the loops of wire. The patent was improved for ear protectors. So there you go. Chester Greenwood, Farmington. Makes Farmington, Maine, the earmuff capital of the world. Did what you know? an interesting state we live in. That's right. All right. Yes, Number are. four, Susie. Number four. Take it away. Number four. Blueberry capital of... The world. Hmm. Blueberry, capital of the world. I did not know this one. And I think it's up to the guys to start this time. Anybody have a guess? What is it? A capital of the world? The blueberry capital of the world. The blueberry. Oh, Maine. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. We are looking for a town <coughs> in Maine. A town in Maine. Yes. New Hampshire. No, not Oh. <laughs> now you're just Thank playing you. with me. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, hey, Pete. Go for it, uh, Blueberry Mountain. What town is that in? Uh, Blueberry Mountain, I think. Bradbury? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was about to say that. 
So you think Bradbury Mountain? No, nope. yeah. that is incorrect. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you all a hint. It actually is named after a different fruit. Ooh. Black. Oh, the pine. I might know it. Go for it, Susie. Is it um fried berry? No, but that's what those guys thought. Whitney. I have no idea. It is cherry field, maybe. Cherry field. I would have never oh, gotten cherry it. field, Mama. You can call it blueberry. <laughs> cherry field. All right, and our last one. Susie, let's hit us with number five. Number five. What main town is nicknamed this? Me too. Canada. Canada. Little Canada. What main town is nicknamed Little Canada? Uh, Mom. I think. It, no. All right, I think it's back to the ladies to go first this time. Yeah, that's right. Lost track, but. Yes. Can you we, have a guess or Whitney? Anybody? Let's shut them out. Susie, why don't you take this one? All right. Um. Little Canada was. Um, I'll give you one hint. It's actually not that close to Canada. Hartfield. Nope. A good guess. What? Wait. Is it Biddeford? It is not Biddeford. But good guess. Gentlemen, go for it. The boys. Shout them out. What is it again? The, what name? Little town Canada. Is nicknamed Little Canada. Rockland. Rockland is a good guess, but not correct. What about Kansas? Kansas is not in Maine, and I know you know that, and you're just yanking my chain. <laughs> so. Oh, is it? Is Hold it? Up. Save it, Susie, just for a second. It's Jeff's guess. Um, I think my uh, what was the question? Pete. Little Canada, what main town? Little Canada, uh, I think is small Canada. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a trick one. All right, Susie, go for it. Baltimore. No, no. <laughs> it is Lewiston. 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 Oh, Lewiston. Oh, Lewiston. Known as Little. I can't get these. And Lewiston's <laughs> characters remain largely Franco-American ever since. Little Canada is Lewiston. Look at all the things we've learned today, right here. Wow. Great right, game, Susie. Set. I think Thank that Elaine won with one, correct. So, <laughs> good job, ladies. Yeah, that was a tough game. That was oh, a tough girl. game. Thank you, Mama. Okay, so let's, Susie, do you have an outro? That was a good Susie's Cues this week. Yes, I Mama do. Box. Esther Greenwood, earmuffs. Susie's <coughs> Cues. <laughs> I love Susie's cues, but I love this game. Susie's cues. Susie's cues. And Jeff? Yeah. We'll be right back. We're back and it's time to wrap it up. Wrap it up. Let's all wrap it up. Let's all wrap it up. Let's all wrap it up. Oh, 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 oh. Wrapping it up. All right. Uh, 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 oh, yeah. episode. A lot of things. We learned a lot of things in all of our summons. <laughs> we learned what kind of favorite birds we have. We learned what, um, some of the nicknames for main cities. And we certainly learned a lot about the main Audubon. So we appreciate that. Um, special thanks to Doug Hitchcock for coming on the Strivecast with us today. And you heard them. They're 300 um, people shy on Instagram of hitting the 10,000 uh, follower plateau. So if you're on Instagram, go over and uh, give them a like. Smash that like button <laughs> for the main Audubon. Um, Noel, Jeff, anything to say as we wrap it up? Uh, yeah. We have to pee. Okay. Um, <laughs> And Winnie and Ryan and all. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
So special thanks to all of you guys for being with us today. And we um, did want to mention we have our 5K coming up. Our next event um, is coming right yeah. up. It is Strive's 5K. It's our ninth annual 5K, believe it or not. This year is going to be a little different. It is going to be virtual. Um, it's not all going to be together on Zoom like we did for Strive Rocks. Everybody's going to have the weekend um, of September 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, to go out in their own community um, and run or walk 5k 3.1 miles for strive um, we're gonna have cool prizes for um, you know the furthest away from strive to do it from the best costumes and all kinds of things like that if you visit our website uh, cslstrive.org you can find out lots more information um uh, ap how about the information about kevin on the roof good question jeff it's actually a great segue because that's going to kick off Kevin on the roof. He's going up on September 18th. And if you're not familiar with our Kevin on the roof event, we have a great volunteer named Kevin who goes up on the roof of a local establishment, Patriot Subaru. And he camps out there until he raises some crazy amount of money. We're not exactly sure what his goal is going to be this year, but it's always a very big amount. And we feel that that's a very socially distant event. So we're going to continue and do that. We are going to do some things differently. We're not going to be able to do our kickoff party this year and some things like that. But uh, one of the things we are going to do is the 5K and all the money raised from the 5K is going to go to Kevin on the roof. Um, so that's pretty cool to combine those two events. And what's also oh, yeah. really cool is Kevin is going to walk the 5K on the roof <laughs> of Patriot Subaru. Um, so much more to come. What? as that gets closer but just shows that you can do the 5k anywhere if he can do it on the roof of patriot subaru then you can do it in your community um so lots of things out there this is actually an, an early bird code where you can save a couple bucks um Whit, do you want to plug that sure so if you go to pslstrive.org slash strive for five you can register right on there and if you use the special code early bird when you're checking out, you'll get $2 off the registration. So that's really cool. Also, uh, kids 12 and under are free and all PSL Strive employees are also free. So if you are an employee and would like to participate in the 5K, just reach out to us and we will give you your special code. And should note too that this year everybody is going to get a shirt and a really cool finisher's medal, a really nice medal with the state of Maine on it and our logo, and it's a really nice medal. Um, so you should check it out. Um, it's worth the price of admission of that alone. So thanks for letting us plug that event, and thanks for listening to the Strivecast. Guys, you want to sign off? Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.